Hello. Happy November. It is November 1st as I'm recording this. I'm sure it won't come out today because I've got stuff to do. But I'm going to do my October reading wrap up. I've spent the morning trying to get verified um, sat status for Taylor Swift's concert unsuccessfully. So we don't need to talk about that, but we can talk about my month, which I also was like fairly unsuccessful. And I read six books in total this month, which is quite low. If you've been up to date on my latest videos, you'll know that I'm like quite behind on my reading goal. So it would have been great to have like a, a month where I read more than six books. Unfortunately, that month was not this month. I'm like still hopeful though. Still hopeful I will knock out 46 books in the next two months. That's just 23 books a month. Easy breezy. I've never read that many books in a month. I mean, maybe at some point, but not this year or last year. But it could happen. It could indeed happen. In fact, I actually have three books that I am almost done with. I, if you know me, you know that I read multiple books at a time. And so last night I could have sat and finished one of the books that was close to the end, but instead I started a new one. And so I have three books that are like pretty close to the end. And I'll probably finish all three of those this week for sure. And then I'm very excited. The final book in the Broken Bonds series by Jay Breeze just came out. I have that downloaded on my Kindle. I'm very excited to finish that or to read that. I haven't started it yet. And I have a couple other cutie patooties that I'm like looking forward to reading. So I like have a feeling that November is going to be a good reading month. But let's go talk about October before we get too carried away with things. Let's talk about um, what I read in October. I read only horror books and uh, romance in October as you should in October. So let's start with, we're going to go in order of just the books I read. So the first thing I read was Hide by Kirsten White. This is a novel. <laughs> yes, it is a novel. This is a book. It's Kirsten White's first adult book. She's written a lot of YA books. I don't think I've read any Kirsten White books, but I know she's like very popular. This is her first adult book. It's like a horror thriller. The premise is it is about this like competition that takes place in an abandoned amusement park where there's like this big game of hide and seek that takes place over like two weeks. They only hide during the daytime and at night they like go back and like can like eat and sleep and you know do all that stuff but uh, during the day like from dawn till dusk they have to be hiding in this abandoned amusement park and the winner gets some money that's like the premise and we're following a bunch of the characters but primarily this one girl who we know is homeless we kind of don't know exactly what happened in her past but we know something that I I think we know kind of from the jump that her whole family is gone. That's why she's homeless. We don't know exactly what happened. We learn as we go through. And then we're following her and, like I said, a few of the other characters as they compete in this competition. Obviously, it's a horror novel, so, like, something nefarious is going on in the park. We learn, come to learn what that is. There's a couple twists. It's a very short novel, and I feel like we didn't really have enough time to really explore characters. I kind of feel like um, it read a little bit YA to me in that we didn't get kind of super well-rounded characters. They have a lot of traumas that have happened to them. All of them are kind of down on their luck. That's why they've agreed to compete in this competition. But we don't really get to explore why that is. I feel like they are mostly presented as like a stereotype. Even our main girl, I feel like more than anything, we like understand that she had something traumatic happen to her in her past. And we don't fully get her like fleshed out as a character. It was just like a little flat for me. Um, but the premise is like so interesting and it's such a short book that it was still like a really compelling read definitely like a page turner i read probably my favorite book i read this month and that is sundial by katarina ward i read last house on needless street earlier this year and absolutely loved it gave it five stars this book is not quite as good to me as last house on needless street but i still like literally adored it i thought it was brilliant i think katarina ward is like so smart and i love what she does with her books it is very different from Last House on Needless Street, but I think if you enjoyed that book, you might enjoy this one. It has, like, a similar kind of, like, twisty, you kind of don't know what you don't know until it's revealed to you sort of structure. I don't want to tell you too much about what it's about because I think the, the like, less you know going into it, the better. But essentially, it's about this mother and daughter. We get both of their perspectives. And the... Uh, mom has like something happened to her in her past and now her daughter's like acting kind of strangely and we know very quickly because we're getting the daughter's perspective as well that like yeah things are strange this mom decides to take her daughter to the childhood her childhood house where she grew up which is called sundial and so we're kind of learning what happened to the mom in the past at sundial as well as kind of exploring what's going on with her daughter now it is like good and really interesting and engaging we get like a very interesting kind of like dynamic desert setting and i really enjoyed it if <laughs> um if you know you know that i'm a mariana zapata super fan i love her books they're just exactly the books for me they like are they like perfect books are they like great literary masterpieces no but they like hit the dopamine receptors in my brain just right and she released her 
latest book which is called when gracie met the grump and it's a little different than her other books because it is has a superhero in it so there's like a speculative element to it because he has like superpowers and essentially the premise is i think pretty early we get this girl we know that she like really wary of making connections we don't kind of know what's happened but we know she's kind of in hiding in some way she's living in this trailer park she has a trailer and um she like works online has like an online job where she does like teaches english to people and like does translation work and the superhero like crash lands in front of her apartment or her trailer and um is like very badly injured and so she's like nursing him back to health health and at the same time is like very wary that like she is gonna get found out because she's been in hiding but also he's like you can't call anyone you can't tell anyone like i just have to stay here and recover and he's very very grumpy um and then it like kind of gets wild and is like more outlandish than Mariana's upon his past works which honestly like I love there's a kidnapping in this book that happens and like I love a kidnapping like I that's one of the reasons I love a mafia romance like I want the girlies to be kidnapped all the time this kidnapping is a little different but um still really good I had a great time I enjoyed it it is the same formula basically as all of her other books though essentially a grumpy guy and like younger girl you know they fall in love you you get it you get it we don't kiss until the 90 percent mark <laughs> you've if you've read a mariana's pot of book you know then i read just like mother by ann hetzel this book is a like culty horror thriller i would say it's more of a domestic thriller than anything else um but i think we do like kind of like verge into the horror elements with like the cult aspect that gets brought in the premise of this book is it is about this um woman who was raised in a cult she gets out when she's like a pretty young child and like grows up in foster care and like goes to college and you know Blah, blah 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 and then we meet her as like a f adult I think she's like in her early 30s and she re winds up reconnecting with one of the other children that were in the cult so one of her like peers that she hasn't seen since she was like a little girl and they wind up reconnecting and um the woman that she's like reconnected with is like a very successful startup founder and she winds up like spending time with her at her house in upstate New York and they're like reconnecting and getting to know each other and like who they've become after all this time and then you know some weird stuff starts happening i think it does a really interesting job of exploring questions of like what it means to be a woman especially kind of around the context of like motherhood and like women who choose not to be mothers and like what does that mean and like does you know like it just explores those kind of questions around like motherhood and how it relates to womanhood and like how those two both overlap and aren't necessarily the same thing if that makes sense then I read another horror. I read a horror novella. I actually had the whole book, but I wound up wound up only reading one novel out of it because it just wasn't really for me. Um, <laughs> but the one I read was like the title novel, and it's things that have gotten worse since I since we last spoke. And I had heard several people on BookTube talking about how much they enjoyed this, and I can like very much see how people would enjoy this. I think it is an incredibly well crafted story. I think it is incredibly like engaging and interesting. Like I read through it very quickly. It was just like mm, really gross, and for what reason? I don't think I totally got it. Like I, I didn't totally like understand it and I was okay with that and so I wound up not reading the other stories because I just don't think this is the guy for me but the the things have gotten worse since we last spoke it is a novella about these two women who start exchanging like ims and emails they like meet on a message board and then start like talking to each other it is so like graphically gross graphically gross like I haven't been this grossed out since I read The Troop by Nick Cutter which is still probably the grossest book I've read just because it's longer but like this book has like similar levels of just like mm, it's gross okay guys it's gross um but like I could say like I think this could really work for some people it just gross is not really what well, I don't think I'm like grossed out super easily but like I don't go into horror books wanting to be grossed out like that's very that's like never my goal I don't want to like spoil it because I think the why it's gross is a like pretty major spoiler but like do you know that if you decide to read it that it is like the troop level of vile but like interesting well written well crafted not for me not for me <laughs> and then the last book i read this month and finished this month was icebreaker by hannah grace this book has been all over my book talk page and by my bookshark page I mean like my for you page on TikTok I haven't talked about it because I just finished it it is about 
it's a romance it is about this hockey player and this ice skater and then there is like this prank at their school and they're down to like one ice skating rink so like they're having to share rink time or before they had separate rink time and she's trying to get to the olympics with her partner who is a different man and then he's, you know, he's in his senior year. He's already been scouted for the NHL. So he just, like, needs to have a good hockey season. And they kind of start out as, like, rival-ish. They don't really know each other at the beginning of the novel, I don't think. And then she's, like, kind of annoyed with him, kind of snippy with him. But that dissolves very quickly. We, like, very quickly, they fall into a relationship. I think they're, like, in a relationship with each other before the 50% mark of the book, in my recollection. They're, like, in a relationship with each other pretty early on in the novel. Like, most of the novel follows them in a relationship with each other, kind of working things out and conflicts between the two of them their external conflicts that are happening around them um but they're in a relationship while this is going on and they're like very healthy people for the most part like they are communicating very clearly like the communication in this is like unmatched in terms of romance novels and they're like you know very aware of like toxic behaviors and like are apologizing appropriately and are like asking for consent in the right ways and like doing like the right things which I you know is like a breath of fresh air in the romance world because I feel like a lot of times that is kind of put on the back burner in order to like prioritize like the romance itself and that's definitely not the case in this book for me though people loved it and I think it's really re well written and I didn't hate it I like had a good time it's not a top tier romance for me because I actually really do enjoy like that Mariana Zapata slow burn like I really love the angst and the tension of like will they won't they and I'm like happy to sit in it for as long as possible and because they're in a relationship for so much of this book you don't quite get as much of that for me it was also just like a little bit too much spice like the spice level was like f I mean not like crazy high but it was just like there was a lot of like spicy scenes because they're in a relationship for the majority of the book and I like really like I've explained I like think three is a cap for the book after that I'm like I'm bored with this I get it let's proceed so for me it wasn't like a top tier romance but I really enjoyed it and if you are looking for something because I think them being in a relationship is like incredibly cute do not get me wrong and if that's something that you really enjoy in your romance novels you like to see them together as a couple I think this could be like a really great book for you because I don't think I've seen many books do that as well it's just not my favorite part of a romance book and so like I kind of miss that element the Mariana Zapata slow burn will they won't they element because they get together and communicate so effectively so early in the novel and they're like a lot of the conflict is surrounding external things they have some internal conflicts as well but a lot of it are surrounding external things it's very short monthly reading wrap up this month because I only read six books next month though get ready it's gonna be like 23 books you wait and see how is that gonna happen I don't know I think we're gonna have to become an audiobook girly I'm not an audiobook girly I've talked about it before I typically don't read a lot of audiobooks and in the past, I have not even counted audiobooks towards my reading goal. I will see you later. Have a great day. I hope your day is brilliant and shiny. I hope you have a, a shimmering day. But I will talk to you later. Bye.